So imagine you have an app that looks something like this. And so if I run this app right now, the app looks something like this. And essentially you have a checkout page. And once somebody checks out, you may want something to happen. Okay, maybe you want to get notified of this. Maybe you want to get an SMS. Maybe you want to create a line in a spreadsheet. In other words, if you have this architecture, right? This is your app. This is your Flutter app. You have a bunch of widgets. You have a bunch of logic stuff happening. This is all inside the app. You might have a database, but you want something done externally, meaning that, you know, if I press uh, proceed to checkout, I want maybe connect to a third party service and let them know that, you know, this person is ready to check out, or maybe I want a message to send to my phone or a million other things. In other words, what I'm looking for is I want ways to integrate an action inside my app with something else, okay? And that is exactly what we're going to be talking about today because, because it's very, very common that you're building something but you want to get notified or you want to connect to another system or you want something to happen. And one way of doing it is, yes, you can code it inside a Flutter app. Okay, you can do it using code, widgets, uh, some kind of a custom logic, custom functions, custom actions, stuff like that. But there is a much, much easier way. And that is exactly what we're going to be talking about today. And so one of the easier ways to connect your app with something else, integrate it with, with a third party, with lots and lots of third party, is by using a service such as make.com which used to be called integromat now it's called make.com and what this essentially allows you to do is that it allows you to create something called a scenario which is uh, called a workflow or an action depending on how you call it that connects to something else and does some kind of an event so let me show you what i mean so let's say i have an app here and I want this app to send me an email or I want it to create a new line in the spreadsheet, for instance, right? With all of this data. Now, let's say we have this data saved in our local store. So let's say I go to local store. I add a bunch of state values. So let's say I have a value called um, total order. I have this value. This is going to be an integer, let's say and I create it. And let's say the default value is uh, 200. Obviously, when you're going to be doing it, this is going to be done automatically inside your app. And when a user presses this button, we want that value to be sent to a third party. We want it to be recorded one way or another. And this is where a service like make.com or Integromat comes in. There's lots and lots of services. This is one of my favorite services. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create this automation right here by clicking on create a new scenario. Now, the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a trigger. There are two types of triggers. There is a time based trigger. So something that runs every 15 minutes, every hour, every day, once a week, etc., etc., on a scheduled basis. That's a time based trigger. Essentially, it's triggered by time. OK, another type of trigger is an action-based trigger, meaning that something happens in our app, let's say we press this button, we want this thing to trigger. Now, if you are doing this when it's connected to an app, obviously the better solution is an action-based trigger. That is when somebody clicks on it, I want my automation to be triggered here. I don't want it to be triggered every 15 minutes because that is meaningless, right? I may not have data, I may not have an action happening here. And so the way you do it is you, you essentially come in here, you hit plus and you search for something called the web hook. Okay. And you'll understand exactly what it does. Okay. So you search for hook. You're going to see web hook here. You're going to press on web hook and you're going to choose custom web hook. Okay. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to choose a hook. If you do not, if you've never created a web hook here before, you can simply click on add and you can save and it's automatically going to create a new webhook. Now, what is a webhook? Okay. A webhook is like a server. Think about it as a server. So like google.com, it's a server. Uh, it's waiting for users to come in and, and uh, type a request. 
that is the same thing this webhook is doing okay it, it's giving you a url and this url is where you connect to from a client and send your data to okay so right now it's listening for data so what we're gonna do is we're gonna test it out we're gonna copy this address to clipboard so that we save it and we are gonna go inside our app we're gonna go to the api tab and we're gonna create a new api call we're gonna call this webhook we're gonna make sure it's post and we're gonna paste the url okay now the body we want it to be json okay and so this is where we essentially format it and the format the json um object you're going to be sending it's really up to you how you want to do it right it just needs to be in a json format okay so if you don't know what a json format is you know you got to read up on it because we're using json objects everywhere when you're doing no code when you're doing api stuff so let's say we want to create a new json object here and we're going to say um you know total price we're gonna say uh, 100 whatever the value is we're just gonna hard code it and let's say uh you know product product name is going to be i don't know nike shoes nike shoes and you know you can have more data here but we're just testing we're gonna hit format nicely format it and we're gonna hit add call so now we have this webhook call here okay and so you can click on it and you can do a test okay so this is just a test we're just sending this webhook and you want to go back and you want to make sure this thing is listening it's now listening for the data and we'll determine the data structure from the incoming data so we're going to come in here and we're going to say test api call okay we're getting a status 200 success we go back and it says successfully determined so what this means is that it understood the data it received the data and now what we need to do is we need to create the second point we're getting the data but we need to figure out what to do with this data so there's lots of things that you can do check this out uh you can do you can add another module you could have all of these all of these modules that are built for a specific product like i don't even know half of you know half of these products right there's lots and lots of products but if you search for something for instance uh, google sheets here you can pick google sheets and you can do all of these actions you can add a row you can update a row this is just one example you don't have to do this we're just doing it as an example okay so let's say i want to add a row to a google sheet and what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a blank google sheet for my account so that you can see how it works we're going to hit add we're going to hit save we're going to authorize into one of my accounts so here i have a blank spreadsheet i'm just going to call it something like um testing flutter okay i'm gonna that's what i'm gonna call it i'm gonna go back here and i'm gonna pick this spreadsheet here okay there it is sheet one only one sheet this table doesn't have it doesn't have any headers we can we can select the column range a to z and here we have different columns and here we can specify the values now remember we already sent our test data and we sent it in a json format with total price product name so that is why if we come back here and we come in here it knows it already understands the data structure so it knows that is what we sent so we can put total price actually we can put product name here and total price here and we can hit okay and now our scenario is complete we can make it you know we can do so many things we're just scraping kind of uh the top of the barrel here okay we're just scraping the top the top of the iceberg all right so now if we go back here we can save this call we can go back to our app and let's say we want to proceed to checkout we're going to add an action here and we're going to click uh, choose api call we're going to select our webhook now if we want to customize this webhook a little bit what we can do is we can go back here and we can add various variables inside this webhook okay so there's lots of interesting things that we can do here so maybe we have a variable total price okay and this is going to be an integer maybe we have another variable called product name right because these might be um dynamic right this is going to be string and as you can see it automatically generates that total price and all you have to do is drag and drop it and that's going to fill it in so we have total price and same thing for product name i'm going to drag and drop it okay and so now this api call this specific api call is expecting two variables that are going to be defined during runtime we don't know these the, these the values of these variables in advance right we're going to hit save call 
we're gonna go back here and now we have parameters you see we have parameters so I'm gonna say parameter the first I'm gonna send is product name and we're gonna say yeah we're just gonna say specific value we can also get from variable local state and we can get we don't have it as local state but if we did we can get that var variable so for instance I'm gonna go in here add another state variable product name string and let's say this is gonna be Nike shoes okay we're gonna go back here and now this is product name and we have product name we're gonna go to available options product name we're gonna add another parameter the second parameter is total price uh, from variable we're gonna say local state uh total order and there you go total price total order yeah and now we are getting dynamic variables from our local state okay we can get it from a database depending how you set it up but i just did local state just to keep things simple all right so now if we run the app and we hit this button we're going to create an api call to our webhook that's expecting product name and total order or total price and in turn this is going to go in here and this is going to save it product name and total price so if we go back here we should see total price here a product name here and total price here let's try it out let's uh, run this app and see if that works all right so here's the app and now let's hit this button and as you can see we have the data here so if i run it again I run that again and I have more data here and so as you can see we have this automation that we created that's created outside of Flutterflow it's just using all we're doing is sending a specific API call with a bunch of data with a bunch of parameters to an external service that is triggered as soon as the data arrives here okay and that's connected in this case to Google Sheets but like I said, it does not need to be just Google Sheets. You can do anything that you want. You can just add another module. And you have all of these connectors. You have Amazon SCS. You have all of this. This is used for mail. You have Appify. You have a ton, a ton of different connectors. You can send an email. You can create marketing campaigns. You have Amazon S3. You pretty much have everything that you need to, in order to create a, a really, really powerful automation. And there's lots of different ways of triggering it. You can, you know, you can do it like how we are doing. You can use a mail trigger, so many ways of doing it. But all in all, the whole purpose of this is that instead of coding it inside our app, we can do it externally. So something like this, something like, like we can do, we have an external service here. And instead of coding inside our app, we can have it externally now this service can respond with data it is optional it does not need to respond with data but it can if it's necessary because if we go back to our app here we can see that we have an action output variable name so if we are getting a value back we can you know give that value a certain variable and then we can use it inside our app you know we can display it we can send it to another service lots and lots of things that we can do with it and so it's really up to you how you want to integrate it what kind of things that you want to do but it saves you a lot of hassle it saves you from essentially going out and creating your own custom action okay certain things you can do with custom actions but that takes time you need to code you need to test you need to make sure it works correctly and this channel is all about no code and that is why the preferred way for doing automations externally is using a method such as this one, using a third-party service that allows you to do these automations. All right, guys, so there's lots and lots of things that you can do. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or you're not sure if there is something you're trying to do, whether it's going to work or not. Or let me know what your plans are for this kind of automation because we are barely scratching the service here. All right, guys. So if you enjoyed this video, definitely give this video a fat like. Leave a comment below letting me know what you think about it. Let me know if you have any questions, concerns, or you just want to say thanks. And also, the most important thing, do not forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button. 
Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you in a future video.